So today we're going to be um, going over a little bit more on how to graph systems of linear inequalities. So we're going to start with number five. Um, you now have two equations to graph. When you graph these, you want to make sure that they're in graphing form. So you want to write down that um, each equation must be in slope intercept form. So, and they must be in slope intercept form. That means that Y is by itself. So we can go ahead and already graph this first equation because Y is by itself. This says Y is greater than two X minus five. So we always start at the ending number, which is negative five. So we start on the y axis always. This is y, this is x. So we're going to count, and you're going to graph this on your paper. You're going to count down one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to put a point. So this is why we started at five, because it says negative five. This is going to be our slope. This tells us where to move. So slope or where to move. So this says 2x. So that means we're going to go up 2 and over right 1. So from negative 5, you're going to go up 1, 2, and over 1. Up 1, 2, over 1 up one, two, over one. And then we're gonna draw a line, but the way we draw our line is we are going to draw our line as a dashed line, because this says that it's greater than, it doesn't have the equal sign underneath. So we're gonna draw a dashed line. And if it's greater than, that means we're gonna shade above this line. So we want to shade everything that's above it. So we would shade everything in this area. So we have our first line graph. <clears throat> so the solutions for the first equation are everything that's shaded throughout here. None of the solutions are on the dashed line because it's dashed. So anything that's on the dashed line, if they were to say, hey, is zero negative five a solution? You would say no, because it's part of this dashed line. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to graph the second line. And you can immediately tell that the second line is not in slope intercept form. So we have to get Y by itself. So I'm gonna bring this down here. I'm gonna rewrite three X plus four Y is less than 12. So in order to get this to be by itself for the y, I have to move 3x to the other side by subtracting because it was positive. And then I have to divide by whatever is in front of y. Okay. So this now turns into y is less than, and then I'm gonna put the x first. So it says negative three x divided by four. So put negative three x divided by four. 
And then 12 divided by four is three. And for this one, if you look, you even though we divided by four, you don't have to flip the sign. So we're not gonna flip this sign because we didn't divide by a negative. We divided by a positive. So if you're dividing by a positive, you don't have to flip the sign. Okay, just keep that in mind. You don't have to flip the sign. It is okay to have a fraction there for the slope. So now we can graph this. We're gonna do the same thing that we did for this one. We are going to start at the three on the y axis. So I'm gonna look at y and go up one, two, three. Try not to confuse yourself with all the lines. And then from three, I'm gonna go down three and over four because that's this, um, the number in front of X tells me where to move. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, and put a point. I'm gonna go down one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Then I check to make sure my inequality sign, um, <clears throat> what that is, is it a dashed line or is it a solid line? This is gonna be a dashed line again. So I'm gonna create a dashed line. And then I'm gonna look and see if I shade above or below. So as I'm doing this, I'm ignoring all of this red area. So ignore all the red area and just focus on the blue dashed line, the blue dashed line. And then we're gonna say Y is less than this line. So we're gonna look and say, okay, does this, is this area less than our line? Are all the values less than our line, the Y values or this area? And so we're gonna shade the bottom because it's less than. So we're gonna shade all of this. And what we're focused on, and I want you to make a note of this, is that the area that's double shaded is where your solutions are. So it contains the solutions. And I'm gonna highlight this so you, can, you guys can see this. So all of this that's double shaded, if I were to have used a highlighter, you could have seen where it was double shaded a little bit better. So all of this is double shaded. <clears throat> so if you were given a question like is, negative one, negative one, a solution to this system for both, right? So we would look at negative one, negative one, and we would say, okay, is it shaded for both? Yes, it is. So it is a solution. Um, you can look at some other points um, and say, okay, is negative five negative two a solution and you would say yes because it's in the double shaded region if they asked you if zero three was part of the solution you would say no because the solutions aren't part of the dashed line so make yourself a note the solutions are not part of the dashed line
So now you are going to be responsible for trying to solve number six by yourself um, by looking at it and graphing it. Keep in mind though, when you do graph negative X that this is negative one X over one. So you don't get confused. And then you'll definitely have to rearrange the bottom equation in order to graph that. Um, so just keep in mind when you shade above and when you shade below, and then whether they should be a dashed line or a solid line. 